Equality is never an accident. At Frontiers, we focus on ensuring quality even as we continue to scale up with the quantity of articles. Today, I'm going to show you how we maintain excellence and satisfaction with a combination of quality and efficiency. Because again, quality is never an accident. It's always the result of intelligent efforts. So what kind of intelligent efforts have we been doing? In October 2018, Clarivate Analytics, together with Publons, published a global state of peer review report. So wherever possible throughout my talk, I'm going to compare Frontier's peer review numbers to benchmark against these global standards. So you can see here the growth of Frontier's over the last five years. One of the big challenges in publishing is really about ensuring quality at scale. Here you can see the growth in submissions, publications, and rejections over the last five years for Frontiers. In 2018, we published 30,000 articles. And to do that, we received over 72,000 review reports. So how are we maintaining the quality of manuscripts and peer review with this kind of scale? We have a number of tools that we've refined over the years, and I'm going to take you through a few of them. So we have our clear set of criteria of what constitutes valid research. This is publicly available on our web page, and it informs decisions for our internal teams, but also for the editors, to be able to clearly have these guidelines on what is valid. We've also published on our web page what we've designed over the years to be clear and valid research, to help the editors and our teams again to know what can be accepted and what should be rejected. It goes all the way from errors in data collection to violation of ethical policies. A third tool that we use is our set of quality checks that you've heard about. So our research integrity team performs 19 different quality checks on all the submissions at Frontiers. They're supported by technology to do that. And during this first stage of validation, they reject over 13% of all the submissions that don't reach the editors. After we go to the peer review team, the review operations team in particular, that will do another set of 13 quality checks during the different stages of the peer review process. So together, they do over 30 quality checks on all submissions to ensure quality at all the different stages of the peer review. How we man manage to do that is really a combination of manual work and technology. Last year, we launched our artificial intelligence review assistant called Ira that really supports the team in making the right decisions at the right time. You can see here an example where the artificial intelligence is looking for human images in the figures. The AI found one image, and by clicking on it, you can click quickly go to the images and see and make a human decision on whether or not this is a recognizable human that would need a consent form. In this case, it's a diver, fully clothed. We can't recognize them, and we can just proceed. We monitor the performance of the teams and the, the, how we do the quality checks in a number of metrics. One of them is the ratings that are provided by the reviewers once the papers go to peer review. You can see that over 50%, around 50% of the reports actually give a four or five star ratings on the overall quality of the study. These are very high quality ratings for the manuscript. And we ensure we spend a lot of time and effort in ensuring we find the best editors and reviewers for the articles. This is, again, a new tool that we got from the Artificial Intelligence Review Assistant last year, where we provide the recommendation from a worldwide database for the best reviewers to review a particular article. You can filter by institution, by h-index, and see the details of specifically why one reviewer was recommended based on their past publications. This is arguably the trickiest stage of peer review, 
finding the best experts to review articles. In the Global State of Peer Review report, there was a survey of over 12,000 researchers across the world. 70% of them say that one of the top two reasons they decline invitations to review is because they are outside their area of expertise. Now, if we look at Frontier's numbers in the last couple of years, we see that our system invitations are declined for being out of expertise in 38% of cases. If we just look at the manual invitations from the editors, this goes down to 26, already better. Now, if you combine the manual work from the editors with these recommendations from the artificial intelligence, you go down to 15%. So this is really the combination of the manual input from the editors with the best artificial intelligence tools that provides these amazing results at Frontiers. Now, once you have the best reviewers, it's also important that they provide high-quality peer review for the authors. We provide a number of tools for the reviewers, including a questionnaire, so not only the quality ratings I showed earlier, but also questions that takes them through the validity of the research and the methodology with a checklist and some questions to answer. And 86% of all our reviewers believe that these questionnaires really help them assess the manuscripts and provide feedback to the authors. Now, an, um, another metric in publishing to look at the quality of the peer review is a simple look at the word count. If we compare the Frontier's average with the global standards, our reviewers provide reports that are on average 10% longer. That means 10% more feedback for the authors to improve the quality of their manuscripts. Normally, if you increase quality, there's a cost on efficiency. But at Frontier's, we don't compromise on either. These same reviewers who are providing reports that are 10% longer also do it faster, three days faster. So overall, what I've shown is that with the exponential growth that we've seen over the years, we've still maintained the high quality and we've managed to keep the efficiency so that the authors can still get their 90-day review time. But what do the authors and reviewers actually think about our system? If we look at our survey results, almost every single reviewer that comes to Frontiers rates the platform as good or excellent. And nine out of 10 would recommend Frontiers to their colleagues. If we look at the authors, 82% of them believe that the review was rigorous and constructive. And yes, this does include authors who had their papers rejected. And 73% of the authors actually prefer the collaborative review approach to the traditional peer review. Further numbers to support this, just in 2018, over half of our authors published more than one paper with Frontiers. And if we look a bit further back, 73% of them had published with us in the past. So authors who experienced the Frontiers peer review actually come back. Finally, against, again benchmarking against the global survey results with the 12,000 researchers, when they were asked how satisfied they were with peer review efficiency, fairness, and quality, half were satisfied and half were not. So you, as a researcher, if you submit your research, it's basically a half and half chance that you're going to be satisfied. But at Frontiers, we have over 80% satisfaction rates. It's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to be satisfied with the process. And in the end, that your article will have received a high quality and efficient peer review. Thank you. <laughs>